Welcome back. Sports Card Culture Podcast number 21. It is the 7th of April, John. We're getting there, man. So, 21, when was the first podcast? Like, October? September? Yeah, it must have been. But me and we Evan were hunting in the summer for materials material. and trying to figure out how to do it. And then we took a little break in the yeah. wintertime around Christmas. Now we just had Easter. It's actually warm today. Minnesota's like, you know, in the all 70s. Right, all, right, it's all right, here's the prop bet. Uh, over, under, one snowstorm left. Uh, I'm taking the under on a snowstorm. I always take the over on that bet. <laughs> I'm taking the under. Now, now it's because here's the thing. You can always push. Yep. Right. You get, we're gonna have the one. So like, are I'm you not, saying not gonna lose Like, what defines snowstorm? Like, are we gonna see flakes, or are we gonna have like snow last over a night, or? Well, I mean, see flakes, I suppose. I mean, but we're gonna see flakes, but I don't think we're gonna have plowable. But snow you know what I mean? Either. Well, I think we got one. Well, here's the thing. But that's why you always take the over because you're gonna get one more. Yeah. And so you can't lose taking the over. Right. I I saw this. I can't remember where but, it was. But when it comes to sports betting, it's the opposite. Every game starts under. So taking the under, I was just about to say it's that it's the opposite because you somebody made the claim that you should always take the under because all games start under. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life, right? No, what it's what the, what that means is it something has to fall into place, not perfectly, but something has to happen for it to go over. And it's more likely often. Now, if the line's bad, yeah, but the that's line what I'm is super saying. low. Yeah, well, but but here, like, but take basketball. Lines, take yeah. basketball, right? When was the last time we saw a 43 to 52 well, game? We just well, haven't. Uh, we just so there's a minimum. Hey, so we just had the national championship. So yeah. I don't know if you, did you watch the I game? I did at not all? watch okay, that so I, college. Gonzaga and uh, Baylor. And so Baylor was, the, it was literally the number the two. Underdog, one, right? th- but they were the two one seeds. Oh, okay. And they were literally the number one and two team in the country. So very rarely do you see the best two, right? Gonzaga, oh, so we got Gonzaga the right game. Had, we had the right game. Gonzaga oh. had not lost all year. But here, so that game, the over under was like one sixty four. I loved the under, except for exactly what had to happen. Mm-hmm. Baylor shot seventy percent from the field in the first half, and they shot like sixty some percent from three. Wow! Which if they Whoa. shoot average, okay. if they shoot average, it goes under. Now they blew them out. It would have been a lot closer game. Gonzaga got punched in the mouth, and it was over. And the fir- they were down nine zero, and they never recovered. Like wow. it was literally, but they dominated the, the entire way. Were Number one team. Yep, and they, oh, so wow. they got upset. They, they cut it to 10 at half. They were down as much as 19 in the first half. They cut it wow. to 10, but then they never made it less. So the right that. game, but it, it didn't play like the right it game. Didn't, well, and in order for it to go over, I think the, the final ended up being like 170. In college, that's, yeah. And that's a lot. They literally had to shoot, which, to be honest, in those big championship games, a lot of times, normally you have the nerves. You see shooting go down a little bit oh, from sure. the mean. They they way exceeded the mean, which you know and they're all eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's not Michael Jordan on his fifth finals. Yeah, yeah. it's like they've never been in a national right. championship game. I mean, a lot of these one and well, done guys, it's their freshmen or their sophomores, right. or you know. So anyway, I mean, it was it was fun. It was a weird year for the NCAA tournament. I I only watched a handful of games once the Big Ten got crushed. Oh, yeah, we got demolished. Well, here, so so my question is that. I know you brought it up, but that's BS, right? What? I should just always bet. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, because the the, yeah. the market determines yes. the line. The line. And actually, determines, as yeah. you watch lines move, what that tells you is where the money's coming in. Which Vegas yeah. is just they're they're just changing it accordingly. Th- th- they're just making sure they're covered. Right. They don't necessarily. Well, they don't care which way. They, goes, they don't right? care as long as the money is equal, and the market usually. Is pretty good yeah. at telling you, you know, kind of where it should be. Well, it's kind of like because uh, we bring everything back to sports cards. Obviously, As, um, that's why we're here. In baseball, cards. in baseball, when you're looking at prospects, and I mentioned this in our baseball episode, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at draft, the round one guys have the most Hall of Famers and superstars. The round yeah. two have less, but more than third. Yeah. And then once you get outside the fifth round, there's basically none. Yeah. They don't spend millions of dollars on scouting for them to be wrong. Right. And I know we always fixate on, like, oh, he was the number one pick, and then he sucked, right? Yep. Okay, fine. But where are you finding all these 19th rounders going in the, yeah. going into the uh, Hall of Fame? Now, right. football's a little different. Football, yep. you can find that. Uh, but baseball is just Well, baseball, not a part of it is you have a bigger sample size. Yeah. Because, like, in, so so in college, rounds. in one season, you're going to play, what, 12 games as a, as yeah, a right. football player? Baseball, they're going to have hundreds of at-bats. Right, and they're gonna have yeah, and they're gonna have oh, other. You're saying, d- d- you're saying the opportunities, the opportunities to be good yes. or bad 
are, are more way up in baseball. widespread, yes. Right. And that's why, like, a baseball season is the best yeah. example of, like, how good are these players because they played 162 yeah. games. They didn't play, There's no hiding. They didn't play a <laughs> one-game playoff game in the NFL where right. one team had a guy hurt yeah. and one team played – Super well. That one Sunday, yeah. Beca- and that's the beauty of a seven-game series in basketball and baseball right. is you find out which team's better, actually. I would argue yeah. basketball is the same thing. We yep. take the number of shots that you take. I yep. mean, you're not you're not going to just be hot three weeks in a row. We were, we, we were you got to take 90 shots in three games. Exactly. You know? like, For sure. <laughs> like, like we, well, and I think – so we were talking one day, who's a better three-point shooter? You know, we were talking about, yeah. like, LeBron, Kobe, or Jordan. I said, well, we just need to look at their three-point career percentage yeah, because – they shot so many times. They, they shot so many threes. Yeah. Now, okay, did, did, now Jordan didn't take quite as many as Kobe right. or whatever, but it's not – But it's enough. But believe it or not, LeBron's got the best percentage of those three. Does he LeBron really? LeBron does by, a long, by like 4%. Well, I think here's the only way you can argue that is – if Curry relies on the three, and I oh, don't no, know that that's Curry. the case. No, no, Curry's way above. Oh, he's way above. LeBron, Who is it? LeBron Kobe, Jordan, and Kobe. Jordan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, so, no, no. Curry's night day. So yeah. LeBron. No, those are the three similar playing styles. I was gonna say like if if you got a guy who's only shooting threes. Yep. Well then, well yeah, LeBron James is gonna be more selective. He's gonna be more wide open. Might take better shots. Whereas Reggie Miller yeah. is just taking taking the shot. Now you know? I I didn't look to see Kobe might have made more threes than LeBron. But he took so many. Right, right, so, right. Like, Kobe did you, did you factor shooter. Reggie Miller at all? No, I just wanted to see of those three because everyone thinks of like, right. LeBron as not being that. Like uh, Somebody was talking about him not being that. I'm like, you have no idea. LeBron's a better three-point shooter wow. than Kobe. Was it by a lot or just a little it's bit? It's like 3%, 4%. I That's think a lot. He, yeah, it's a lot. I think. I don't I'll, know basketball I'll, well I'll enough pull, to know I'll that. I'll pull it up but. while we talk again to get the actual numbers. But So, first week of baseball, man. Yeah, you jump let's in and do talk it. Well, so, Akil Badu. Uh, who was a Rule 5 pick uh, from the Minnesota Twins to the Tigers, hit yes. a home run in his first at-bat, and then, what, a grand slam the next day? Yep. Is that what happened? I, think, so. I think that's what happened. A walk-on. So he's, he's, uh, he's up. Um, what do we hear? Bo Bichette hit a couple home runs already, so that's good. He's our early yes. favorite for a big pop in cards. For for the local guy, the guy we're most excited about is, is Byron Buxton, which Byron we Buxton talked about him not too long ago. We said, hey – if he puts it together, he could be a top ten player in the baseball. Well, here's if the he, thing: he's he been a top ten player in baseball seventeen times. Yeah, he just gets hurt. He just gets hurt. You yeah. know, he, he'll be a he'll be a top three player in baseball for three weeks, he, and then he's out. He hit a home run in each of the first two games he played. Yeah, because he sat out one game. He had like a stomach flu, and then he had another one today. Right. So I didn't, he's, I didn't so know he's he got, had another yeah, one. Yeah, he's today. got three homers wow. in. Six games or something. I mean, it's, yeah. And he's uh, – I think he's got at least one stolen base. He's got on base a bunch. He's Thank I mean, him, talent's not the issue. No. It's just not. Yeah, it's, um, so, card-wise, that's where a guy comes really frustrating when it's like all the talent in the world is there. He just cannot stay on the field. Right. And so, yeah, if he can put together a season, I mean, Byron Buxton can be an easily a MVP guy. Yeah. Like – You'd be like, oh, this came out of nowhere. And it's like, no, no not no. really. He was the number one prospect in baseball. Everyone expected him to be there already, <clears> and we've seen glimpses of it. Oh, yeah. It's just a matter well, of – Well, like I said, he'd, he'd been the best player for three weeks at a time, well, multiple the, times. The Twins scored 15 runs. Did yeah, you see that, that game? Fun. Nelson yeah, Cruz and one. the whole – I mean, they were just – And Nelson crushing. Cruz is like 75 years old, just hitting – The guy just hitting doesn't dingers. stop. <laughs> that, that never stops. That – um, but I got a, a Nelson Cruz top chrome rookie in the next Cabot auction. I'm gonna see how how well that does. Yeah, and yeah, I got that I mean, and something else that's kind of fun. So other guys around the league, I saw that have done well. I mean, Trout started well. Mm-hmm. I think one of the coolest stories has been Otani. Oh yeah, Otani definitely hit, hit a home run and, and had a pitched. Great, had they a said it's the first pitching. time in a hundred and almost like a hundred years that someone batted in the top two in the order yeah. and pitched. Oh, Because well. obviously pitchers bat every game, but they bat nine whole every I did time. Make a, uh, Bumgarner maybe batted eight once in a while. Or I nine. did make a uh, Nico Horner sale today, so like nine cards. And he was doing really well in spring training, but I don't know if he did anything on the season yet. Horner. I don't know. I Usually I'll – if I sell a bunch of a guy, I'll look up their stats, see what mm-hmm. happens. I just didn't do Ryan that. Ryan Mountcastle's busy. actually started well. Who? Ryan oh, Mountcastle. Castle. So and I got him on. I got not, him on my fantasy league. Believe it or not, Orioles. The Orioles are playing better. Like, yeah. They went from being the absolute worst team to like. Well, who's that, that other guy that's on the team? That power hitter. They got um, Mancini. 
Trey Mancini. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. He's well, a then they old got for cards. Then but they got Adley Rushman, the number one prospect. Yeah, coming. Catcher, I mean, in a few catcher, years. Yeah, blah. <laughs> this will be one of those things where, like, if we do this podcast for years, every time someone brings up a catcher, I'm just like, blah, yuck. <laughs> and watch, yeah. we're going to go through a catcher renaissance in the next three years where I'll just be wrong. Like, Joey Bart will be oh, you know else, win MVP you know three else hit a, times. You know who else hit a homer today? A three-run bomb? Huh. Uh, Dylan Carlson for the, yeah. uh, for I the sold, Cardinals. I put up a Carlson multi-variation list and it sold a card in five minutes. So. Yeah. Uh, I got a couple so, of uh, nice cards in there. And, and people were talking about him. Was he in our top ten? I can't By the way, I had two refractor first Bowman crowns, mm-hmm. and I sold them both to uh, on one of the live sales on Facebook. I got a good price for them. I got like 45 but I'm sure they're a little more than that. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, a little a tad tad bit more, but I, oh, that was nine months ago too. So. Uh, the other big news: uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, had he got surgery hurt. today, I believe. He had surgery, right? On his, on his labrum. I had heard that uh, he would, they were limiting him in spring training, so he was feeling a little issues in spring training too. Whenever you hear that in baseball, yep. It's it, it, I mean I think Evan would agree with me. Uh, he did surgery. He did? No okay. surgery. But whenever they do that, whenever they're like, hey, we're going to limit his stuff, and maybe he'll have surgery, maybe he'll – they always have surgery. It's like they, they delay it, and they delay it, and then mm-hmm. ultimately five weeks later, he's out. And so right. whenever you get a guy like that card-wise, if you're not a long-term believer and are starting to feel it, it's almost better to sell right at the first hint of it. Right. Because I can't think of a guy who they're like, oh, he's got shoulder problems, but maybe he can make it through the season, and then went through the season. I right. can't even think of an example of that. By the way, I th- that's that's a good point on injuries. It's, it is it is sad to see because yeah. you know, Tatis oh, is becoming the face of the yeah, prime for a big year. He already had a home run. And, yeah. But listen, the, the surprise team of the league so far, the Cincinnati Reds are 5-1. and one. No. Today they beat the Pirates 11-4. to four. Here's the guy. Tyler Naquin, we were talking about right before. Yeah. It's Naquin, Naquin. Na- na- he he, he hit a home run. Nick Senzel is hitting the ball. Jonathan India. Senzel is a, a long time. Aquino had a home run. Uh, the guy who, is still on the red, yeah. So they got oh, some but guys. He's suspended, that's right. <laughs> so Nick Nick Senzel though is a guy who I like was Nick, a big he's prospect. He's a post hype yep. guy. Yeah, post hype. Definitely. We're seeing the because he was a top. Two or three pick or yeah, something, right? He's top like five pick, sure. top five pick. Yeah. So I mean, we heard the name. I remember I in the nineteen national, uh, uh, there was a guy. So I always talk about uh, that. So at the Chicago National, you know mm-hmm. that that weird annex part of yep. the convention center, and it's almost like a, a different part of the national. And people like it over there for some reason, I guess. And I'm like, why? Like I always forget to go here. But right. um, so that was the guy who had all the Jordans. He had. Uh, like 350 Michael Jordan Fleer rookies, all graded, all different grades, and that's all he was selling, right? So I like to talk yeah. about, like, different ways to collect and different ways to deal. Is like, this guy only deals in one card. He didn't even have any stickers. He just had just the Fleer rookies. Yeah, that's all he dealt in. And so you can be which, as narrow as one card, or you can do everything. Which the good thing about him for you is, as a, as a dealer, like me, when I say for you, John, I mean for me, for yeah. anyone listening – if you set up at the national and he's at the show, yeah, you know one of the first things he does when dealer to dealer around, he goes around and buys Jordans yeah. because guess what, he wants to be the guy and dealing with he knows whatever the margin grade of every single grade because yes. he's only dealing on that one card. Yeah, he's very specialized. But too. next to that guy, I remember uh, he had uh, so <laughs> this is a kind of the same thing but a little different. Same thing, like yep. one display case and maybe two. Everything with a black label. Yep. He didn't sell anything but black label. So yep. it's kind of the same thing. It's different same cards, yep. but one type of card, right? Yep. But he had a bunch of Senzels there. I mean, he, mm. the, the hype on him was definitely real. Senzel. Um, I was a Castellanos guy um, when he got drafted. I saw him as Joe Maurer from a hitting standpoint. Okay. Like, he, he, he was a really, really – High quality hitter. Yep. Um, good eye. From the good, draft. Good yeah, contact just guy. Which, by the way, we were talking everything. with my dad. We were watching the game on Sunday with my brother. And do you know that the year Yogi Berra won the MVP, okay. his strikeout percentage on the season, I think he struck out 20 times in an entire season. Oh, wow. Under 2%. That's like some Tony Gwynn stuff right there. Miguel Sano, do you know what his strikeout percentage is? <laughs> It's literally like thirty or yeah. something. It's just like the silliest. Like, literally, Sano strikes out, struck out more so far in the season, the first six games, 
then Yogi Bear struck out an entire right. his entire season. All right, all right, all right, Evan. I got Just I got hilarious. some homework for you while we talk. <laughs> all right, I want to know he had a higher strikeout rate. Miguel Sano, Adam Dunn, or Jeremy Burnett. It's got to be Sano, actually. I think. You think, Sano is, you think yes. Sano is the winner? I Sano's think it's Adam so Dunn. Bad. It's got to be Adam Dunn. Sano is so bad. He's but I don't think it. it's by a lot. I think it's gonna go. I think they're. I think it's gonna go. Dunn, Sano, and then Burnett is gonna have the best bad strikeout. You know who else never strikes out for the Twins? Luis Arise. Oh no, kidding! He's he's literally gonna win a batting title. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing about a guy like that card wise is he has to hit three thirty seven or he's not relevant. Right. Because he just he just won't he won't even hit a double. I mean, he'll double. Yeah, he hits a few doubles. Well, he'll hit singles and triples. Right. You know, but there's just, there's just no power in it, and you have to do that to be Tony Gwynn, and there's right. not very many Tony Gwynns, yeah. right? There's Tony Gwynn, there's Wade Boggs, and there's – am I out already? Gwynn Boggs? Four. Mauer? Just high average, Rod no Carew. power. Rod Carew. Rod Carew. Um, I mean – Now we're going back 50 years already. I mean – Right? Who else? I mean uh, – Akiro. Akiro. He had a little power, but Akiro. That's five. Um, I'm out. Oh, Ozzie Smith. He had like mm. – Ozzie Smith had like – Yeah, but his hype was more like defense, yeah, not really defense. a hit in yeah, general. He wasn't known as – But he like wasn't a, hit. He was hitting he was 285. Yeah, he was a good hitter, yeah, but he, not yeah, – he, he he He's the only guy that got in because yeah. of defense, right, for right, Christ's right. sake. Who's the third guy? Burnett. 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 Jeremy Burnett. Oh, man. Um, By the way, listen to Buxton's start to the year. He's hitting 357. He's got three homers and four RBIs. Nice. And he's got a 1.58 OPS. I mean, the guy is just wow. absolutely crushing. So, the ball. So, and defensively, he's everything. So OPS, else. or is that slugging? I think I'm thinking about slugging. So slugging is the rate is based on basically where would you end up on the base every time you take it at bat. Yep. So if you have a 1.5 uh, uh, slugging, that means you end up getting a single plus. Halfway to second base on every at bat. So your average at bat is yeah. one point five bases. So if you're like a nine fifty, yeah. you get ninety five percent of the way to a single every at bat. Every at bat. Now OPS, I don't know a good way. What is it? Sano by a long by a lot. Sano is bad. Like how? He's really bad. How bad? Twenty eight. Burnett is twenty one. I knew Burnett. Sano is thirty seven. Thirty seven. Holy crap! Thirty seven. So as bad as Dunn was. What was done? 28. 28, so 37. 28. I mean, du- Miguel Snow is almost twice as bad as Now, here, here's the thing. Let's, out almost let's, twice as much. For our non baseball fans, Adam Dunn would hit 45 home runs three years in a row and hit 202. Yeah. Like this guy. Or 212 <laughs> or 15. Or, you know, I mean, he was. <laughs> It was horrible. Believe it or not, his career average is higher than that, though. His, uh, Dunn's career average yeah, is Yeah, like but it's like because yeah. of those years, though, it's like 237 yeah. or something like that. It's really bad. But but he hit forty five home runs exactly three years. It's in a row. painful it's to crazy. watch Miguel Sano. It really is. Like he, anyway. That's but if you ever wanted to see, if you wanted everyone to see the most unproductive swing that you've ever seen in your life, just look at Jeremy Burnett swing and hit a home run. You're like, okay, you're kind of loading up on the swing there, and it just <laughs> doesn't look like it. Forty-four percent this year, this year and last year put uh, together. Can, can we find like what's Joe Mowers? I bet Joe Mowers is under ten percent. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. Joe Mowers doesn't strike out. Lower than that? Do you think it's in the five range? Wins lower than Mauer. I know that. Yeah. Oh, do I think his rate's lower? Yeah. Career. Lower. Yeah, I might be under five percent. I mean, you know the story, the I mean, famous story for those out. of you guys who live in Minnesota, you'll remember this. Joe Mauer, his entire high school career struck out once. Thirteen. One time. Thirteen. Thirteen. That's wow. That was a Tony Gwynn. I mean, thirteen. This though, is a weird podcast. Hey, John, <laughs> thirteen is really low, John. Like that is. I bet you Gwyn's got him by low. a lot, though. Then Gw- Gwyn's under ten, I think, but I don't think he's much. Wow, under 13. thirteen. I. Gwyn's under four percent. Four percent. No, Gwyn's a ridiculous. I brought up Gwyn wow. seven times already on the podcast. Four. Gwyn is ridiculous. Whoa! Gwyn's I would have guessed he was like eight. Four percent. Wow. Well, because here's the thing. Like That's I knew incredible. he was. Light years hey, above. Watch Mauer. Tony Gwynn's prices. Let's go. Let's drive Gwynn uh, up. I mean, no, Gwynn no, is hey, so undervalued. Hey, it's on the uh, so on the good. card invest, I'll think Gwynn's bikes is like. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> why are they? It's like we were four looking. We, we, we were actually looking at Sports Center Investor before we started, and it's like, why are these guys' prices who aren't related to moving? Well, right. I think people have conversations like this, right? And then they start buying, and yeah. the market sees like, yeah. 
like a couple years ago, I have a story. A local dealer actually thought Russell Wilson was far, you know, way undervalued, and so he went out and bought. Oh yeah, I remember three hundred tops Chrome rookies. Oh, I didn't know so that. I thought he time, bought some bangers. Well, he bought a bunch of contenders too. Oh, but okay. He literally bought every base oh, I didn't know Russell that. Wilson that hit eBay for like a four month period. So everyone's like, "Wow, these Wilsons are selling fat because he yeah, was buying." Yeah, the one guy. Was and the, but them. the reality is, he was also he was not only moving the market by his purchasing, but I think he was realizing. The market is low, right. and so he was taking advantage of an opportunity, which was in turn moving the needle. You know. Well, I got a card that I stumbled across. Um, I'm gonna forget what it is. It is a Stadium Club Tony Parker with LeBron James in the background jumping, and the uh, um, the artist uh, the first day editions that are numbered to like two thousand. They're like two bucks. Okay. So I've been pick- I've been grabbing those. Um, LeBron in the back. I like yeah. It. Do you know the story about the Patrice Bergeron hockey one where Patrick Kane's actually in the stands behind him? You no, know no, I have no idea. It was that funny. One. Actually, Jeremy. What up, Jeremy? What up, Jeremy? Uh, did his video on, on uh, you know, new slabs coming back and showed mm-hmm. guys. And he actually showed some of his cards he sent. And he had sent that card, which I was aware oh, cool. of it. But it, it PSA literally puts on the slab Patrick Kane in background. Mm. So... Yeah, I've seen those. Wh- which that card, there, it, it's no different than the Menendez brothers with the Mark Jackson. Right, you or, know, you or, have these um, photos Sam where Vincent. Yep, people yeah. realize who, yeah, Sam Vincent. Now, some of them are actual players, but it's funny when you have actual fans in a picture that that, yeah. that become good players. Well, I'm going to tell you one. I really don't want to say it. So, fortunately, we don't have a lot of people listening to podcasts, I guess. <laughs> um, so, a customer brought in a 1998 UD Choice Kevin Garnett. Yes. Right? So he shows that to me. He goes, oh, Kobe's in the background. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know about that. And he goes, who's sitting on the bench? And I go, oh, it's Larry Bird. Larry Bird, Larry Bird was the coach of the Indiana Pacers. Yeah. And I went, this is an all-star game. Right? Yeah. Not all, and then I go, okay, so now I become really infatuated with this card. And there's a, there's a base card, which doesn't yeah. worth a whole lot. But then there's a choice reserve. Yeah, the set. reserve. Yeah, by the and way. And do you know... If those were one a box or not? I don't. I never opened it. I, I, I need to find an almanac that will tell me what the rate is. But the, the choice reserves never come up, right? Right. So I become infatuated with them. Like, it's the all-star game. Kobe's laughing. So one thing, Kobe's smiling at Garnett scoring. I don't see Kobe doing that unless he's on his team. Unless it, yeah. And then Larry Bird's on the bench. So I'm like, okay, this is the all-star game. Yep. So I go on YouTube. After I, By the way, after I bought all the ones on Com C for under a dollar, I bought 28 of them for – under a dollar, and I nice. bought them out. Yep. And did um, you keep them in your ComC account? Or yeah, they're still in the ComC account. account. Yep. I got. I put like nine bucks on them. Nice. Um, I'll probably just get them shipped. But if I sell a couple, that's cool. And so I go on YouTube and I look up 1998 All Star Game. Wow. And I'm I'm gonna watch because of the great shot. Cause Garnett looks like he's going for a rebound. Yeah. And Kobe laughing. I see it. It's that windmill dunk he does in the third quarter. Wow. So Garnett, so this is the windmill dunk he does in the third quarter. And they caught it mid dunk. He got it mid windmill. Mid windmill. Wow. Because he still had the ball in his hand. Wow. And so um, I'm just like, I, I pull, love this card now. I love this card now. 1998 UD. 1998 UD. Just put in 1998 Choice. Okay. And uh, Garnett. And it'll pop up. So here's the thing I'm ripping a bunch of Sports Illustrated. Yeah. So I got in. Um, when you ex- when you say ripping, you explain to people. I'm, what you oh, mean. so what I do with uh, magazines is if they're not worth selling, um, by the magazine, mm-hmm. um, I rip the print ads out of them. Mainly, I'm looking for sneaker ads mm-hmm. uh, from the '90s, and there's a couple of ads that do extremely well, and I've been working on a database so that I can know exactly what book every ad's in, and so I'm on eBay and I find somebody has the complete run. From like eighty six to two thousand three. Oh wow. But by year. So I ordered ninety four through ninety nine. Yep. And last week was a big sports illustrated ripping database. So now I know every ad for So uh, you you catalog them as you go. Yeah. And so I'm ripping ads. Damn if the inside first page inside is a two page layout of the windmill dunk. Wow. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a display of the Sports Illustrated page. Yep. I'm gonna grade the base card, 
and I'm going to grade the uh, UD Choice. And then frame them together. And then frame them together and just kind of put, That's like, uh, by the way, it was both of their first All-Star games, too. Wow. And yeah, because so, I noticed Kobe's in number eight there. So yeah, it's so it's, like, it's going to be, like, first All-Star game. It just, I, I just, like, I saw that instant. Oh, I got to make so wait, so it was Kobe's rookie year, 96. No, 98, because no, he played he, in the youth, uh, the, whatever you call it, the rookie versus the rookie game sophomore. Game. But I thought Garnett made it, like, his second year, which would have been 97. Well, it might have been Garnett's yeah. second year, but it was Kobe's Col- first Kobe's one. first, yeah. yeah. No, no, first, that makes first sense. One. Yeah, but Col- it might have been yeah. Garnett's first one, too. I, I wow, want to say amazing. I remember them saying that when I was watching. So I had to watch three quarters. It, of it. it is like a little kid. Kobe's looking up. If you guys, yeah, don't look he's up. just Kobe's having like fun. Looking up, smiling, it's a great card. just loving the fact Garnett's just you know. Going this to card is this card is a great card in terms of photography, in terms of yep. history. Yep. And then those choice reserves. Now, why? Did, okay, so I remember these cards. They say preview on the top. No, some of them are preview and some are he has base. He has, oh, he has a non-preview. Okay, that's okay. A base card. Yep, yep. But the 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 reserve. But I think one he has doesn't. the reserve one's got to be out of the base. But it's got to be one a box. The choice reserves got to be the um, the uh, because there's no gold signatures in that. Right. Right. So it's got to be a replacement for the gold signature. And it's interesting. People are putting with Kobe in the picture. You know, some people. By are the way, they weren't doing that when I started buying them off. Yeah. By the way, this is all from a customer that came in and said, "Oh, look at this." By the way, don't share information, even though I'm saying it on a podcast. Because right. I I, w- I want to get like twenty or thirty of those reserves before the price goes up. Right. You know, I only got. Two. I just bought another one the other day. Nice. And I, I wonder now. I wonder if we can, if you, when you go to slab it, if P- PSA will put with Kobe with and Larry Bird and, and Larry. with Kobe Bryant. And and I don't Larry know if they're Bird. gonna put Bird because he's there's a bunch of guys on the bench. Yeah, but nobody. But, but, but Bird's identifiable. Clearly I just it. started seeing Larry Bird and eBay listings too. Did you? Yeah, it was always with Kobe because Kobe's real obvious. Yep, yep. But you're like, oh, look at the bench. You're like. Oh, oh, that's Larry Bird. What's up? You know, and then I'm like, wait a second. Uh, Lakers, Timberwolves, Larry Bird, All Star game. Nice. You know, yeah. But yeah, I just went down this weird rabbit this hole. The cool part about it cards. might be my favorite cards card. Are now. actually a, they're a snapshot of history mm-hmm. that's kept. Which Absolutely. Like is, it's a neat thing to have these historical. Well, moments. that's that Sam Vincent card with yep. the twelve. Uh, Jordan jersey, like yeah. that is a snapshot of history because that was where he couldn't find his jersey like and he had to play game. a no name on the back. And I thought it was the second half only, right? Or was it? That's, I thought something I happened remember. where like his jersey got torn, and they the replacement oh, maybe, was yeah. gone. Not his. So right. I, it'd be interesting. We could look up the history more of that, but but yeah, that's I mean that's that's, that's a real card with real history. So in other words, it. go get your Garnett with Kobe and no, don't and, and no, re- no 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 that is not and, what I'm trying to do. I want to buy some more and recognize how good Tony Gwynn was. That's the yeah, that's the more real Tony Gwynn Tony and Gwynn. Garnett UD choices. I got a skyrocket from our uh, uh, 190 uh, <laughs> listeners. Nice. Um, so so let's look yeah. at market movers. Yeah, let's, market movers. I was gonna pull it up. So uh, top ten. Uh, for movement price movement by player, uh, number one is a guy I actually had a customer bring up today. I'd never heard of this guy, uh-huh. Yerman Mercedes. Okay, I for I, the White Sox, who no idea who Eloy this guy is. Jimenez's uh, replacement. Okay, left left field. I think left field is what Eloy is playing. Um, and like his only card in here, I think it's the only card he has. Okay, is a 2021 tops this year. Oh really? Raw. Auto, so no one is even great. I don't. Oh, think he doesn't even have a base card. He doesn't have a base card. It's just an auto. And Holy that auto, smoke. that auto is selling for one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, right. It's number one on on market movers. There's today. nothing to buy. You can't even so, buy a cheaper card. Exactly. Yeah. Which so sometimes you see price movements that are like Adam Thielen. Yeah. His contenders oh, yeah. auto. When he started playing well, the price movement on that specific card skyrocketed because it was his only rookie right. autograph. Had he had more. I had a base so card so think about this. This is basic oh. economics. You have supply and demand. When supp- so if demand increases a little bit, but way more disproportionately than there is supply, right. you actually see you can see bigger uh, gains. You can see bigger yeah. gains. Are they really a sign of this guy being this great player? But this not is the much, same but, thing yeah. as uh, who is that guy? The big tall kid in basketball who was on market movers a couple months ago. Oh, uh, Christian Wood. Yeah, Christian yeah, Wood. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah. Like he just same didn't thing. have. He anything. just didn't have anything. You know, so so if you wanted do? him. There's only a few listed, so the prices are. By the way, I got my ninety bucks for that Kristen Wood I found. Yeah. I, I don't think they're probably selling for that anymore. No, I'm sure they're down because he got hurt. And, no, yeah. well, so, I mean, it just didn't seem like a guy who was gonna keep taking off. By the way, I, this next guy is a soccer guy. I looked up a soccer card uh, that we sent in to grade. Okay. Um, this is not him, but there's this guy named Erling Holland. 
plays. He's in the Bundes, okay. Bundesliga. I think he plays for Germany. Right. Or I don't know whatever. I don't. I don't know enough about soccer. I'm probably sounding stupid already, but his wow. base. Hey, tops anybody get a know it as base? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so his base tops Chrome, John. Not numbered. Not a refractor. Not what year? Autograph. Last year. Okay. What do you think a PSA 10 sells for? I have no idea. Soccer. Okay, but just um, but just think about like think I'm about a base. Two hundred and fifty. No, no. Think about a base is ion. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Five thousand dollars. What? You were closer than me with hey, ten grand. Hey, hey uh, Jeremy, I was over at the shop. They wow. opened a box of Topps Chrome Sapphire Soccer. They pulled it, Jeez. a card of it, his to twenty five. They have it listed for like forty five thousand. It's not, and it's they're not that's even like crazy. it's not even an outrageous price. There's been sales. Oh well, yeah, I mean it's five grand on a base. I cannot chrome. believe the money in soccer. Like, well, I, 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 my mind is blown. I can believe the money. Okay, how should I say this? I can believe the money in soccer. It's hard to believe the money in soccer cards because they've been trying to make soccer cards a thing for thirty years. Yeah. And it just never. But now it's hit. like Europe has bought in. Like yeah, they're in. And one, whereas Asia going in on basketball is what we saw drive oh, basketball. Absolutely. And now like Europe. It said, oh yeah, that guy's what's yeah, up. Soccer. You know, and you and need them because the Americans aren't ever gonna no. really do it. And I, so this number. But we comes. will if Europe buys them on cards. Then yes. we'll go. Oh well, f- we follow the we follow the leader. Yep, follow the leader absolutely. So this guy is name. His name is Ur- Urbechi Easy, Ezzy Easy E. Easy uh, he, E. His not not Easy E the the hip hop oh. not the. Damn, I was I wanted Easy E Rick Ted. You wanted uh, Easy E from the the crew back in the yeah, day with Dre so. and yeah okay, <laughs> half the police. Uh, twenty twenty Prism Premier League base card of this guy is up a hundred two hundred percent. Okay, so he's a rookie. I you know and. No, the two hundred percent where he was selling for cheap or two hundred percent where he's yeah he was selling for cheap. He's up to like. Seven bucks raw. Okay. Well, and that's not bad. Was, three fifty you know, is not a common. No. Or, or a dollar card to two. For a base card, you know. The number three one blows my mind. This doesn't make any sense to me, but maybe some news released. Chase Claypool, rookie receiver for the. Yeah, uh, there's no news on that. Pittsburgh. I haven't seen any news. But you know what? I will tell you this. If you look at Claypool's values and Jefferson, Claypool mm-hmm. sold way less than Jefferson, and Claypool had a lot of hype. So maybe it's yeah. just the market catching up. I mean, his Prism Silver, raw. Is one of the cards in here? They have two cards of his in here. It's up forty. His his prism silver raw is up forty percent. Uh, they're selling for thirty five dollars raw. No. That's more than I would have guessed. No. I would have guessed it was a twenty dollar card. And then what? Me. Jefferson's what? Sixty. Yeah. Yeah. So he's actually yeah, Jefferson, it's still a pretty big Jefferson, gap. Jefferson silver should be more than they're more than that. Well, we talked about that, but yeah, but within yeah. the same position, yep. That's still a big gap from Jefferson. And so if he's got hype, I think that might just be like, hey, look, Claypool's yep. selling way cheaper than he should. And then the market moves. They're 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 relate they're connecting to the movements of other players at right. that position, right. like DK Metcalf. You're not gonna you're not gonna look at Claypool and go, well, Herbert sells, but well, yeah, well no, okay, that sucks. doesn't mean yeah, anything to me. Uh, number four, uh, Nick Robertson, who is a hockey player okay. who has a young gun rookie this year. Series one or two? Do you know? Series one. Okay, I believe. Well, that's um, good. Not. We need series one to get a little love. Get get a little love. Uh, now I now I definitely could see the news connecting to our number five guy Kenny Galladay, who okay. just signed. With, I don't know the news. Just signed with the Giants. Sure, like, New York market. Yep, New York. So I mean, no. and if you've noticed, I actually sold this last week. We've had it listed for over a year. We sold a National Treasures uh, Daniel Jones rookie patch auto. Oh, you did. We had it listed really high. Oh, be, maybe like, because of the Galladay signing. And I think they think Saquon will be back. I think they think they're going to mm. be better. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, they're going to have good draft picks. Hey, not only that, you have. Um, I'm not saying this is directly connected, but you have you have Wentz leaving the Eagles. No, that division being up oh, for grabs, did, it's just awful. So, so they're basically like, hey, if, if, they're going to win the division the at healthy, seven it's, and yeah, it's, ten. It's theirs for the taking. Seven and ten, right? Yeah, because uh, extra game this year. Uh, seventeen games. Have right? they decided on what they're going to do for? Preseason games? I think they, they reduced it to two, right? Three. So three oh, preseason. Oh, really? That's all they did? Three instead of four. The okay. early reports were they were going to take two preseason off and add one regular season to make the players happy because technically it was one less game to play. Right. Technically. Now the st- now the starters uh, don't not, play much yeah. in the preseason, so <laughs> it's a bigger deal for them to play an extra regular season. It's weird that they only dropped one preseason, though. So that's interesting. Galladay, the next guy on the list, and then we'll only go a couple more, is uh, Will Smith, uh, who's – Baseball player for the Dodgers, catcher, 
who uh, not not the Men in Black. We're not talking about the Will Smith, the actor. We're talking. So he he has a Topps Chrome Will Smith. update in 2019. Will okay. Uh, do you, you know anything about you that, know Evan? About Will Smith. Yeah, but I mean, well, is thank he, you, Evan, for that is expert he, is analysis. He, is he, he he's must just be on starting. the Dodgers. They expect the he, Dodgers he, he, to he win, must, and he must be playing. Oh right, but I think what Evan's saying is he's on the Dodgers. Yep. We're gonna the go Dodgers World Series. Yep. It's kind of like we're watching Don. the Brooklyn Nets right now, and Durant is back, and they're they were up by last time we saw. I think the game finalized. They were they won by like. Five. All right, who is the player on the Nets who will get the biggest bump because he was just on the Nets, but not a star? Um, Who would that guy be? I like Joe Harris as a possible. Joe Harris might Partly because he's so cheap that, like, all oh, no, of a sudden. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah so, like, percentage-wise. Now, he's not going to – I think Kyrie Irving has some potential. We're yeah, but this. he would he's, be one of the stars. Yeah, but I'm his, thinking but like, his, car, I, I, his like, cards I'm thinking like sell. a guy on any other team yep. would just be a common. But because they're going to be part of that team, is there anybody? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Harris is one oh, who – You know, he won the three-point contest, but other than that, people don't know who he is. That's a fun part of And he's a – he could have – significant impact as a role player yeah well i mean you got the Igodala effect yes. you know that kind of a thing where it maybe gets hot so eh, and i ahead. also think lamarcus aldridge who yeah you know, aldridge could be because he was he came to the spurs post all their winning with duncan and those guys yeah so he never really he's never won right. and, and, and like people remember players who play well in playoff games because yeah. like the average fan like i know some guys who are you know, big time NBA followers. They watch every game. Yeah, but the that's average not that's not most people, yeah. and so most people are like, "Oh, the finals are on. I'm turning it on." Mm. Oh, who is oh, it? Like, guy's good. This guy's been in the league for 15 years, but they're like, "Oh, <laughs> you know, hey. oh, he just hadn't made a nice shot." Oh, I do good, that. Man. I mean, I'll yeah. I'll watch a playoff game and like I've never. I I'll say to myself, and it'll be a star. I'll be mm-hmm. like, I've never watched this guy play, and I go, mm-hmm. "He's got an interesting playing style." That's me for baseball. Actually, yeah. recently has been. Now, now that I don't know why they're doing this, but, but the, twi- the Twins are playing all these day games, which is awesome. So we yeah. have a game out of the shop, and I'm like, oh, I oh, you have a game on it with ESPN. No, we have it's Bally Sports or whatever. It's oh, Fox you have Sports. Comcast. Yeah, we have, or, you used no, to come we, to the Evil Empire. Okay. I don't know what we have. We have no, we have MediaCom. We had them on. I don't. We get their channel. I don't know. Yeah, that must still be Comcast. Comcast it's, now it's a different. It's not Fox Sports North. It's Bally's or whatever. It's no, Bally's is Fox Sports now. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, they're. No, they're oh, no! What I heard our, about that was apparently the Bally's is linked to like the Bally's Casino, and part of the name change is about betting. I makes sense. Bally's that we were. Yeah. Out, I played in a poker tournament in Vegas, at Bally's. Right, we but that's there. part and of the host, name change, apparently. And they host they host the World Series of Poker. Yeah. So so apparently the the branding. I thought they were just at first I thought it was just a rebrand so that like you wouldn't know it's such a crappy company <laughs> that doesn't play the game of your home team. Right. You know because you're always in a dispute about money. But I, but I had a customer say, "Nah, it's something to do with sports, uh, betting. sports betting." Um, which makes line. sense. We're gonna so. see when sports betting goes legal everywhere. You're actually going to see them be the sponsors to a bunch of teams. I mean, I wonder, I wonder what the last. I wonder what the not not the last because that's not what's going to happen. I wonder what the only state to hold out will be. Because that was going to be just U- one Utah. state that's going to go. Nah. Utah. Utah. Oh, the, oh yeah, the Mormons. Utah. That makes the Mormons. Sense. Yeah, I mean, that, would that guess makes sense. sense. That was an easier game. Out, than out I of a con- <laughs> out of a conviction of you know. I yeah. mean, no, there's other. I don't states know. Does too Utah? That, maybe Utah has gambling and completely wrong and judgmental. No, I'm not judging. <laughs> I'm just saying based on the. No, no, that that's a pretty easy one if they don't have gambling. But it's always. But they're one really state close like, nah. to Nevada, which is weird. They're literally the. Neighboring it would be. States. They don't. Yeah. They don't have casinos. Yeah. yeah, but it would be uh like, Hilarious. it would be like uh, Arizona. Arizona is like the state that goes, nah, we're not gonna do it. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, because well, they don't do like Martin Luther King, and they're like, they're racist. Nah, they just don't do stuff. No, <laughs> but but and here's the other thing though, John. Here's where that is. I don't know if it's gonna hold up. Is all these states are going to have the numbers of revenue from other states and what they're there's taking There's always a holdout, in. though. There's yeah. going to be a marijuana holdout, and there's going to be a gambling holdout. No, I mean, I yeah. agree. There's going to be. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be 47, 48 states will have both marijuana and gambling. Yep. Yep. And then the rest will be, yeah. There'll be a couple of states that are just like, nah, we're not doing it. So any other sports card like sports card related like players anybody you've been seeing selling that's surprising um what have you seen I, i'll tell you this uh something i kind of thought of the other day was ever since i i'm building out that network of variation listings of anybody who's a star uh, uh past and current is the older hall of famers 
mm-hmm. from the 90s, they sell surprisingly well. Yes. Like Ripkins and Marinos. Yes. And, and it, they don't sell, uh, they don't sell like frequently, but like when I get an order, I'll sell like nine Marinos in one transaction. I'll well, sell yeah, 15 I, Ripkins in one transaction. I, I have, as I, it's funny you bring up Marino. One of our regular customers who comes in the shop weekly just to buy cards for his PC. I've never seen him open a pack. No. Never seen him buy any other player that I can think of. No, he'd put together one set, modern set. He buys Dan Marino, and he's got a, you know, he's got the master list. Which, by the way, this is something we could talk about. No. If you want to collect a player, Cardboard Connection has master set lists. Oh, do they really? That's where cool. you can literally print off all eight thousand cards of a player. Sounds low. I mean, it's eight thousand, and, and, and you can check them off. No, no, the, like that's about right for no, most of these guys. Yes. No, 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 yes. no, wrong, wrong. I it's know like that eighteen thousand for like no. a Hall of Famer. Yeah, no, all the parallel. No, because the okay, well, if you're gonna add every color. Oh, okay. So, yeah, well, yeah. let me say this. So the guy, we, the guy we talked to who is the Frank Thomas super collector, yeah, yeah. the largest Thomas, he stops collecting in 99. That was the like last. Two, oh, no. Last playing, whatever his last playing. No, it wasn't was. last playing. Okay, whatever was like 03 or something. Okay, crazy. whatever his last playing. Last years. year with the White Sox, probably. Yeah, maybe he doesn't do A. Because he's he the Chicago NATO. So he said he has, I think, s- like 7,000 unique. Yeah. Different. And he has like ninety nine percent basically. He he has like a couple rare high end parallels he needs. And I'm picturing like I'm picturing like Beckett like super player like that little dialogue box yep. they would do with the different cards. And I want to say that was five digits on on some of these Hall of Famers. Now if you go well yeah because it well I'll say this much he doesn't do this year's prism Frank Thomas's because there's eighteen yeah. parallels. And then if and he doesn't do it with the old well and if you're ever gonna do. get to the if you're actually gonna accomplish your goal of getting every card and you leave it open every year you're yeah. i mean it's kind of fun because you keep playing but he's not even done with the early stuff right, so he's, right. well what's funny was well, we told that story yeah. so that was the first national yeah and then this guy the frank 2017. Well, in chicago and and frank thomas uh super collector comes in he's like oh and he had a website and he's showing on yeah. the phone and everything and uh you dig through your frank thomas's and you find one he doesn't have i found one we had about 800 frank thomas's and i found one he did not have so let me let me ask you something and i made it made my national and i gave it to him oh, for yeah. free obviously now let me like, ask you a question that was i was gonna leave it in you gave it to him for free yep. he was like well what do you want for him like well, i can't charge you for this card i found a card that you it's didn't like a have. quarter and it's you know, i don't thing. want the quarter how much do you think you could have got for that quarter card like if you were like, all right, and then you just came up with the biggest number you thought he Five would pay. Five bucks. Five bucks. You think you don't think he would have? I think he would have went more than that. I, I think he would have went like. No, 25. he's actually very he's very conservative. He understands like he doesn't get because people know I him as that. Man. He doesn't get bent over on prices. He just goes, I'll I'll buy from somebody else or I'll find another one or you know like he, okay, fair I enough. think he walks on that card for. But you think years. you think five bucks he would have been like okay I don't know why that's you charge me five yeah, bucks yeah, and that's a charging, weirdo. Yeah, why, <laughs> why you rip me off? And then it would have been like this weird like why are you doing this like right. you know? <laughs> well, I got something I do want to talk about. Um, we talked about it last podcast, but I am excited for the Wisconsin Dolls card show. Yes, I I'm might totally. be more excited for the Wisconsin Dolls card show than I am for the national. In terms of location. Well, just experience, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's got right. things that Chicago doesn't have. Now, Chicago's got a lot of things they don't have, but, you know, it's, you know. Well, what do they have? That I, I have and the they got they professional say. sports teams. And they yeah, got, and they yeah got, that you have to drive into. It's not in Chicago. It's in Rosemont. Yeah, but, you. I mean, there's there's casinos, there's restaurants, there's entertainment closer. And they don't have that in Wisconsin Dells? They Here's don't have the a thing. casino, I don't Here's think. The thing. They don't have a casino in the Dells. Uh, fair enough. I'm just saying. Here's I mean, the I'm just throwing this car out. show. I started looking at like the map, and oh, I started yeah. looking at all the all yeah. the things they got. I'm like, holy smokes! First of all, it's 24 hours. It's open 24 hours. The show is like everything. Apparently, oh everything there, yeah. Like yeah. the water bar is yep, open yep, 24 yep. hours. Restaurants, guess, bars, yeah. Every like the arcade might. So there is there are indoor water park, outdoor water park, arcade, amusement park. Yeah. Um, it's a one-stop shop. And then, yeah. like, all the lobby areas are just, like, I'm looking at these pictures, like, this is a swaggy place, right? Yeah. And so, and the best part is, I was talking to our friend Matt. What up, yep. Matt? What up, Matt? Um, I was like, dude, when you go to Chicago and you want to do something, okay, you get done at 6. You know, the show ends sure. at 5. It takes, like, an hour, 45 minutes, whatever, to get wrapped up. Okay, I got 10 minutes to get to the train. 
or my car. Yeah. Then a 25 minutes into Chicago. Mm-hmm. Then I got to get to wherever I'm going. That's another mm-hmm. 15 minutes, best case scenario. I'm getting damn near close to an hour just to get to the thing I want to do after the show. Now it's seven or seven something, right? Right. And then that's an hour back. It's but let's be thing. honest. Most people that are going to the show, here's the benefit to it. As I talked to some customers about it is they, a guy who wants to go to the show yeah. who would normally just go by himself, now he's bringing his family. Bring They're family. doing that during the day. I don't think there's going to be a lot of dealers who are like, hey, I'm going to go swimming now. No, 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 it's not that. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is the rest of the I can yeah. just go. Yes. I don't have to do all the stuff that I have to do in Rosemont. Yeah, there's yep. a cool joint behind the parking garage in, the in Rosemont. And, yeah. But, you know, eh. You know, it's it's it's, and then not only that, like with my with my kid and my wife, yep, I can get done at six o'clock. Maybe it's a fifteen minute walk, because of the big players. Yeah. Well, now let's go right to wherever we want to go to. Yeah, like, no, we no, just I, I go there. I mean, I mean I'm and, loving and, and, the and I'll experience. say yes, and I'll say the Dells needs this show, and the show needs the Dells. Like yeah. it's a great relationship because they've been out of regular customer right you know they had a really bad time oh, yeah. i'm sure i'm sure a lot of companies probably went out of business mm-hmm. like smaller businesses yeah. now some of these big corporate ones have the capital to right. absorb you know losses or, or they can get float from the yep. landlord because otherwise who else is going to buy the place yeah <laughs> you, you know, want the place like, just being empty it's 84 right. it's, it's 1.4 billion dollars like uh, uh, i'll just okay. sell it to somebody like who uh, yeah, <laughs> who's yeah. buying it yeah <laughs> So but, uh, yeah. Now I talked to the lady on the phone. Yeah. Who and so she what said, are we up to? So she sets up every year at the national. She she oh. told me she's recruiting some dealers who yeah. only do like basically the national. And they're try- they're getting good response. That's good. Um, she when I called her on Saturday, they had two hundred of the four hundred sold out. Okay. Now oh, she so says, the cap is four hundred. Well, not she said so. She said they have the ability to hold six, but the main room holds four. Yeah. And then they have another room. Oh, there's like breakout room. There's a breakout yeah. room that could be another two. There's a now, bunch of them. Now I think they're planning on doing that breakout room for the August show. Right, right. Which she told me this is the trial run. Yeah. For them to kind of get their yeah. feet wet yeah. and then go get the name out. She's also sending it. me and I'll and I'll let everybody here listening know. But if also if you stop in the shop, I'm gonna get. She's mailing me promotional materials. Oh, awesome. I'm gonna try to hand them out. You know, I'll, I'll give her a call. I'll put them out uh, at the show this weekend. Yeah, I'll give her a call in Bloomington, back and I think it's, I think what you're recognizing a lot of people are going to recognize that have little kids that like this is a, a value it's add. a two for one it's a value add. thank it's a you value it's, add, it's a value add, big yeah, time yeah, yeah. and now now what it, one thing i didn't say because it only impacts me and you and people in minnesota is, yeah yep. it's closer to chicago yep but then uh, matt said something else he goes well you know there's a lot of people that just fly in that fly into chicago so they're not going to want to go to dell i'm like and i, I thought about it I'm like, okay and i thought nah if I'm going to fly into Chicago from somewhere, yep. tell me I'm not going to rent a car and drive three hours to Wisconsin Dells. Three hours is well, not I'll t- I'll a tell you massive. This. The next weekend I'm flying bump. to Dallas. Yeah, but the show's not in Dallas. It's an hour, almost yeah. a forty-five minute Uber ride to Allen, Texas. Yeah. Everybody who flies in there is doing that. Yeah, and so, so three hours. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I I hate flying. Yeah. I'm afraid of flying and I hate it. Right. But by the way, those are two separate things. I'm afraid, but I also hate it even if I wasn't afraid, right? Yep. And so I get it. You're flying, and then you get in a car to travel some more. I got it. But three-hour car ride is not that big of a deal. Right. Because you're an hour into it. Now you're in the middle. Yep. Another. I mean, we did Eau Claire. Eau Claire, eh, two and a half. Mm-hmm. And it's like, eh, you know, we got back that night. Like, well, every, well, screw that. We got back by five. Right. You know, and we stayed a long time. And so, like, I see the value add here. The family stuff is off the charts. Yep. Um, the ability for your wife the and kids to go. The timing of it is really nice because. Yeah, summer. Well, it should be warm enough, but it shouldn't be that hot. But they, here's the thing. They have an indoor water park. Yeah. So yeah. It, even if the weather is horrible, I know. it's going to be it's great the best, yeah. for, for, the, for the family. And, like you said, there's a benefit to it all being in one. Like, literally, I can go from my hotel room yeah. to the restaurant. To the show, I never. Have and to. apparently, apparently, there. So Matt was telling us apparently there's a couple places that you can stay where it's kind of a long track because it's a big, it's yeah. a big place. Yeah. But you know, I, I just I just think the value of the show and the location of the show is better than Rosemont. Well, I'll say this: it is so it's clo- it's central between Minneapolis, Des Moines. Chicago, Milwaukee, Des Moines, yep. Madison. I mean, yep. it's. 
you know. And I think I think you can pull some Omaha, and you can pull some um, Indiana. Well, stuff. no, and you're also going to get the Dakota. All the guys who do the Blooming yeah. the Bloomington show who drive from the Dakotas. I think I think I think you, I think you get yeah. out to Cleveland. Oh yeah. I think you get people on, uh, driving from Cleveland because Cleveland is going to be seven hours. Dude, there's not a know? show of this size anywhere. other than the national right. in the Midwest. Anywhere. I can't think of dealers. I mean, no, it's. And there's nothing really in the um the Rust Belt either that I can think of. There might be an Ohio show that's really big. But no, there's one in the, well. The, this is further east. There is one in. Uh, Pittsburgh. No, it's in Boston them. or something. Yeah, Boston. Yeah, yeah the New York and Boston. I there's think Pittsburgh has some. There's one big East Coast show that's happening, actually, the same week as Dallas, which is weird that they're both happening there. Yeah, but Dallas and East Coast are two distinct yeah, but, different markets. But this is by far the biggest show. Like them yeah. doing them different seems a little odd, but anyway. So yeah, so already we're at 200 tables at oh, it. That, well, that was this weekend. I bet there's. Well, here was the other conversation I had with Matt. We talked about. Um, what up, Matt? I'm curious. I'm <laughs> what up, Matt, for the third time. Um, what is your opinion? Would you rather? What do you think is the best? Is Steve chance? coming? What up, Steve? What I up, want, Steve? Yeah, Steve should come. <laughs> um, Steve. only only if there's an arcade nearby. <laughs> Let's go. Um, so he we're talking about like whether a lot of dealers and not a lot of attendees versus a lot of attendees and not a lot of dealers. In terms of long term success, Both. would you rather have not? Thank Clint. <laughs> that, that I'm cheating. Oh, okay. That that makes the game better. Uh, we I I would like the best of everything, John. I, I always answer. want the best, John. So, do you think it's better to have a tons of dealer and maybe an understated attendance or a lot of attendance with less Massive dealers? Massive attendance because attendance will draw dealers. In other words, I just the opposite. No, I'm there. I just the opposite because what I think would happen in the opposite was. The people who did attend, because when there's a lot, when when there's more dealers than there are attendees, and this is relative, so like mm-hmm. this is uh, different than like a twenty table show versus two hundred or four hundred mm-hmm. table show, uh, the dealers will start having to compete more with each other mm-hmm. to get that customer. Everybody who went is gonna be like, "This is the greatest show. I got this deal. I got this deal. I got I this deal." I don't. And they're gonna spread that. Dealers, no, no. But what I'm saying is, you, I don't think that's a real mindset. That's a real thing. No. That's absolutely no, because you everybody's already online. I'm already competing on eBay, and nah, no, because no. people are so fixated in what they spent on for the weekend or for the day, and they like got to get that I've back. Seen, John, here's the deal. I've seen the evidence of it in the Bloomington show on a small level. Yeah, since the attendance has skyrocketed, the the actual amount of dealers has dropped from like they used to do 60 but now with covid they limited it to 40 but they have to, yeah. they to 40 yeah. the the dealers who are doing it are literally there's people lining up oh right right there now it wasn't the other way around it wasn't there's so many dealers no, no, the no, fans not, are lining I'm not up saying like if there were the the the, the attendees aren't going to have a good time but if there's not enough product to buy it's not a fun show for the people going to the show yeah, but what I'm saying is if there's enough And then people for the there, next show, it's like, I'm not going to yeah, that but show. Yeah, but I feel like the next show. Well, that's what I mean. It'll drop. Like, for example, I'm almost ready to go set up at the St. Francis show because I went up there. Yeah. And there's enough people there. And there's most. Wow. I'm like, the St. Francis show is a very. Nothing. Forever. Not a good show. Now, it's a better show to go buy at. Yeah. Because there's still enough there. Right. But I'm not competing with other buyers. Not as many people. But it right. depends on so which side. Uh, let me ask you this. Are you. I'm just saying, if I have to pick one for, for future, for which re, from which side though, as a buyer or seller? No, no, no for right. success of the show. For the success of the show. Yeah, you want good dealers. Yeah. I want. But that's the, more like the, the museum to go feel. look at all this stuff, get good yeah. deals, spread how great the show was because yep. it's all all about the customer experience. Yep. Right. And when that customer experience, the all the attendees are coming back and they're bringing some more people with them. Right. And that's going to support the dealers, right? I agree. And so that's that. It was just a, it's a parlor game because obviously you want. Well, let me, say this, answer, let, me, let, let me say this, though. Let me say this. Like Heritage, for example, being at the National, like it's all publicity in the sense that like Heritage isn't even selling anything then. Right. They're, they're recruiting consigners right. and they're recruiting Buyers. consignees yeah. and they're they're trying to market what's coming. Right. So that's a different that's part a of a branding. show, though. That's a, but that's a different yeah. – uh, now, the cool part with the National is you get to go and see a million-dollar card in the case. Mm-hmm. You don't see that in Bloomington. No. But that's more of like a museum feel. Like mm-hmm. w- is, like going to Cooperstown, 
it's really cool. Oh, the National to definitely things, have right? about ten percent museum. Museum. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like, great. There's no way I'm ever buying this, even though it is and for sale. There's no one. <laughs> there's no one buying it. No. Yeah. Or well, I mean, there's like a couple yeah. legitimate museum pieces that yeah. aren't for sale, but right. there's a lot of stuff that is for sale, and some of it's going to sell very little. Of it's very little. Sell. Yeah. But but it's they're museum pieces, yeah. and so and you can look at them. And I'll be honest, if right. I had that collection, it'd be cool to set up a national just yeah. to let people see. Just it. to show it off. Because like as a collector, I appreciate, and th- what they're doing is they understand like the average Joe Schmo could care less about their PSA 10 53 Bando. They don't even know what that is. Right. But like to a collector, it's like. That's really cool. Right, so it's like right. the inner circle is like appreciating what everybody has because they actually get it. Yeah, you know, I, I just get it. I just really really hope that this doll show goes well. Yeah, because I can I I'm gonna bring my are kid for the next for the, twenty you, years. Yeah, you, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, close. Yeah, I just I don't have anybody yet that I can trust. Um, that knows how to run it. I told Mike, buckle up, Mike. I, I'm gonna owe you big time because I'm I'm gonna be out of town. Yeah, for that's, three straight weeks. That's fair trade, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you're you went golfing for three weeks. No, no, <laughs> no we're gonna yeah, sell stuff for the business. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. sell stuff, but but it is a taxing thing on the business to, you know. Cut yeah, I don't know. I would argue all the travel is pretty rough too. I mean, it's fun, but. Well, no, it's, it's actually yeah, no, easier it's still, to be it's at the shop work, too. No, for sure. No, They're but what I mean is easier yeah. to be at the shop. You go home every night. Sure, yeah, sure. you know, you make your own dinner or whatever. You know, but he doesn't get to go out and eat chilies. D- yeah. The, okay. The uh, all right. How many times are we eating chili and, and Dell? I know I'm gonna be like, if hey, there's, Clint, not, you one, hey, dinner, if there's like, not one, I'm not even gonna set up. I'm gonna be like, you know what, Wisconsin Dells? Until you guys get a chili. This sucks. I'm leaving. No, I'm excited for it too. I'm really. Shows are. Let me say. Let's let's dive into a topic. One of the things. I love about the hobby is where it all started for me, which was a show yeah, and the social side of it and the collecting side mm-hmm. and the relationships and the networking and all that. The internet's amazing and it's helped people collect, yeah. but it's not, the internet was never to do away with no. shows. It's actually to help like the connections in between time of right. them happening and, and the, it, it's a it's the, a it's a utility, but yes. not but not the reason. It's not why a replacement. We, I I I say this all the time is is one of the reasons why I have the shop is that collecting is an extremely social activity. Yes, it's, it's like drinking at a bar. Yeah, you can like drink at home, at bar, yes. but like who wants to? O- now some people do want to take a box and open it at home while they yeah. do whatever. Oh, they're the weirdest. People but the but like the reality <laughs> is, if I'm opening a box, the only time I've ever opened boxes with other people, right. you know, it's like. No other reason. Yeah, I mean, it's like you don't know. Like, I, if you I've find a, me opening boxes at home, John, yeah. sign me up for. Do they have a card ripping anonymous? Like well, some sort I, of, I, get I, me into it. Don't get me wrong. When I'm hard this up, this guy is is he's opening boxes on his own. He's in here's a the deal. bad place. I open up plenty on my own. When I want to open some stuff up, I want to open yeah. some stuff up. But what happens is you pull some big hit, and you're like, I, I, and you're looking around, and like yeah. there's nobody there. Or then Fuck. at that point, you know what you need to do is you need to go live and let our yeah, listeners. Yeah, right. And then you have chat log, and, and that's part of the reason why people do that. It's just more fun. So it think about fun. what people are doing even online. They're yes. like. Hey, I'm opening this. It's not a break. Join this is my stuff. Me. Yeah. Come watch with me. Come like this me. is fun. And and cards are are an extremely social activity. Yeah. And that's that's why so card shows are so good. If you're in the Minneapolis area this weekend, uh Saturday, which is the tenth, I believe. Uh Saturday the tenth from nine until five, we'll be at the Valley West Mall. It's the Valley West this yep. weekend. So I'm gonna have to go in. I did not send the email, so I have to go try to ba- buy a Oh, really? Right. I could set up with a buddy too. Who Did you just forget, or? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. you forgot. There's just no. Well, that's such a weird. No, explain to everybody what how they do it. It's so right weird. now, there's there's a waiting list, and there's more dealers that have regularly set up for yeah. more than a year. Yeah. They're not even taking. This isn't including like, hey, some guys. Like, hey, I want to come set up. It's like, no, you've been it, a yeah. member. You've been setting up regularly. They had to shrink because of COVID from like 60 dealers to 40. Right. So he thought the only fair way to do that is at 7 o'clock on Monday night, two weeks before the show, you have to send an email. On the exact day of exact And he time. literally, well, now he's the uh, one who sees him. So the, uh, honest, the reality enough. is if I send it at 7.05, I'm getting a table because I've sent okay, it for seven enough. straight years or whatever. Yeah. Know? But the, but if you don't send the email that day at all, yeah, like, I, was on, I was on tomorrow. a phone call. Yeah. I had an alarm set. I didn't know this, but somehow when you're on phone calls, your alarms yeah. go off or I didn't hear it or something. So 
like 720 rolls around. I'm like, oh. Uh, so I sent him an email telling me, he goes, sorry, there's none available. Well, I'll put right. you on the list. Because they're not for regular, they probably sent the email. And now they right now are taking no new members right. into the t- – so this is the Twin Cities Sports Collectors Club. Right, they had a club. It's, I mean, it's it was, a, it was like a years. co-op almost. It's actually yeah. a nonprofit. Yeah. That has a – they actually have a treasurer. They have a – president and they have meetings and they have you know remember this show is 1976 started yep and they have a website so if you ever want to know they also publish which i don't know is your store on their website because they have no i looked on there i gotta send them yeah send an email so send date now you have to become a member if you're not to get oh no i how am i gonna come up with that 30 bucks or whatever (laughs) the lifetime is like 60 yeah they wanted like 20 a year (laughs) or a lifetime at 60 i'm like Like, um okay i I ever not do let me let me let me crunch the numbers for a few weeks and i'll get back to you yeah let me see if the value (laughs) add is there to just up front the 60 (laughs) dollars but yeah I, i think i can explain that so the monthly show is this – now it's only Saturday. They're hoping in May it's going to go back to Saturday and Sunday. Oh, and no, they're do, hoping they're going to They'll add. get out? Will they get out of the big lot? No, I think they're going to stay there, mm-hmm. but they're also going to be able to hopefully add. Oh, and add the hallway. Uh, that would e- be nice. Either the hallway or, or – I think right now the issue is the 250 or whatever the state regulations oh, and okay. size gathering. I think yeah. that's oh, the reason that's, they – Yeah, but we're way past. <laughs> Oh, in yeah, terms so of attending, well, so, so those of you are out of state, or especially if you're in locales that don't have malls like this, so yep. the way the mall is, it's like a not quite a strip mall, it's a really massive strip mall, but it's the thing where you have the stores, and then there's a hallway a because hallway, Minnesota's yeah. cold, yes. and you don't want to go outside to go to the store next door, yeah. and so there's a hallway, and then what happens is historically in Minnesota. We like to have car shows there because there's this hallway, big hallway where we yeah. can set up tables. And there's people. Yeah. Milling from store to store. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Which made the show really weird because if you're on one side or the other, it wasn't a natural, like, someone wouldn't necessarily walk in only one door and go from one side to the other. And right, so there right. wasn't a natural flow, whereas this now is a big circle. Yeah. Um, so big lots Although, of Although, I don't know. Business. If I went there, I would hit up every table. I can't say. I stopped. Well, some people, yeah. yeah. I mean, because we were at yeah. the very end, and I know a lot of people would have spent all the money they were oh, going to spend yeah, by the time, or you know what I mean. Or they would have spent all their money with you because they came in at that. Or if they point. came on yeah. my, yeah. So it's like <laughs> luck of the draw. Like, where did you park? And you know. Yeah, no doubt. So. Well, I want to go back to the Dell show real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, do you, do you, did you ask her? I'm sure you didn't. I'm, I'll probably ask her. Do you know if he's they or she? It's a husband and wife team, right? Yep. Yeah, and um, I'm wondering if they're reaching out to any of the manufacturers and stuff. Since it's that show is being the the spring show is being canceled. In so the way it sounds I mean, is it sounds Canadian like show for the up? August show for sure. Oh I really? Think, um, she thinks if this fills yeah. with the four, they this one they might even add people in the other room. Well, here's the other but thing too is if it fills, I would hope JSA is going to be maybe. There, you know? Well, that's what I'm saying. Even if it fills, yep. I can see at the last minute. All these manufacturers who are like, eh, going, oh, yeah, okay, there's plenty of tables. I'm actually going to text my guy JSA, JSA right now and ask him if he's coming to the Dell show. Oh, oh, maybe we'll get a live scoop on live, live tape. We're live. Are we on air? We are somewhat I, on air. I, we're, <laughs> we're, you know, I mean. Well, it was live when we taped it, so that's pretty good. But, yeah, I'm just thinking, like, it'd be cool if the manufacturers were there, too. Yeah. Um, and that that makes for a, a nice. Th- no, are the man? I've never been to the regional show. Are there uh, tops and panini at the regional show as well? Uh, the s- much smaller booths, but they are. But they yeah, are. Yep, yep. They're okay. there. Um, JSA's there. PSA's there. PSA at the. Do you think PSA at, will show up? So PSA at the regional fanatic show in Chicago mm-hmm. sometimes show, which is. Fall and spring, yeah, we're, at the same we're location doing a bunch the of national. names here. So it was the Suntime show for a long period of time, yep, yep. and then it was the it's TriStar like, show. Fanat- fanatics, I think. But it was TriStar. I don't know. Or just uh, whatever. I so there's a bunch so, of names. So yeah. it's all the same show. So it's in the <laughs> same location as the national, but it's upstairs, and it's about half the size or less. It's like 400 dealers yeah. instead of like oh, 1,000. That's, that's know, a third or a, third, a quarter. A third. Yeah. Um, that show had P- PSA. They're taking cards to grade, but they weren't grading anything on site. Uh-huh. Or is that the national? They'll actually That's grade not a stuff. That's not walkthrough. Yeah. Yep. So you so you can drop stuff. Okay. Or you can get autographs authenticated. Yeah. But you couldn't get anything slabbed. The national is the only time where they actually whatever machinery they move. Right. To actually slab the card. Well, they, it's like they a big event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they bring their whole staff. And yeah, I gotta, I gotta think if they can swing the manufacturers too. I mean, that's just gonna solidify it as a real event. Yeah. As a real big event, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna like last week when we taped. Yep. I, 
I downloaded the application. I had my table the next day. And then uh, tonight, because you got yours yep. in August, I'm going to go sign up for August now. Well, if, you, uh, if you're that did serious you about the show. Did you call her or did she have an application? Um, by the way, JSA is not going to be there. He just Oh, how me. dare you. No, sir. Tell him um, he can do things. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and grab the August show now that – yeah. You know, so did you call her or did you get another Yeah, I just called her. I called her. So she had emailed me because I put, well, I put on my, which ended up working out well. I put on my thing. I wanted to just pay cash, mm-hmm. but she's only allowing local people to do that, okay. which I'm like, I'm a business owner, but that's fine. But I said, hey, I'm actually talking to some guys who Jeremy bought a six quad yeah. for Minnesota guys. Because the nice thing about buying a six quad is. Some guys like me, I'll actually take a full eight-foot table. There's other guys who are like, I just want one display right. case. And then you could have four guys split an eight-foot table yeah. and each stand behind their case or, you know, whatever. So there's going to be a big Minnesota presence. But, yeah, you know. that's nice. So yeah, she I'll, said I'll send her an email then. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of dealers from outside the Midwest, though, that's that are good. coming. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of states that are still shut down, and they're not having any shows in their local area. I mean, well, that's why Dallas Which, is doing way, so well. Which, by the way, why haven't you or would you set up at the Bloomington show? Have I you? just haven't attempted. Would you? Hey, are you, have you ever? Oh well, yeah, yeah. I took your fest. table twice, I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Wow, I've taken talking, your table a couple we're times. Talking way back. That I was, was I was a Mounds View guy. Yes, for the longest the, the time. School. I've done Mounds View maybe a dozen times. Okay. Um, Science but in. the only time I've ever done Valley West is when I took over. I think I maybe only did it once. Okay. And then I would do. Do you know about uh, Rob and Mark if they're doing their show again? No, but you know, I stopped in really to should. I stopped in to say hi to Rob on Friday, and he what up, Rob? He, he gave us a shout. He's like, "Hey, thanks for the shout out." He must have listened to the podcast. Yeah, or I sent him an email. I said, "Hey, we talked about you." <laughs> and he uh, he I bought some cards from him. I actually bought a, a couple cards from my personal collection. I bought a Griffey Auto. I Ooh, didn't have a Griffey Auto. Very so nice. I were, uh, we, we, we got there finally. We landed the plane. I would still want that 17 it. Topps Archive Griffey Auto, the one where I bought the box, hoping to get it, and I got the World's Worst box with a Kevin Moss and a Jim Joyce Auto. Oh, I remember that. And I had no budget. Who remembers? Listen to this. Oh, dude, it's horrible. He got an umpire. What a neat. I got an umpire Pops is like, and Kevin gonna, Moss with should, my two They should have given you an announcer, too. That would have been just, They should have given n- you a, a Joe Buck. No, <laughs> what they should have done was I said, hey, can I have that box of archive? And they should have punched me in the face. <laughs> and that would have been Here, better. John, I'm going to kick you in the nuts, take your money, and save and you. And then the I'm going to be like, okay, that worked out better than. It was the worst box I ever opened in my life. And I had a $300 budget. I had no money because I was building the business. That is like nuts, but uh, that's funny. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what we're talking about. What big, we're, big by t- by the way. Oh yeah, big, I want that Griffey Auto. Big release now. day today. Yeah. And for still you, coming. maybe. <laughs> well, what's coming is so today was. This is unique. We had I think one from every sport this week. Oh. So Black Diamond, tribute, select football. No. Um. No, there wasn't a basketball release this week. Ah, uh, no, there was Re- Chinese New Year Revolution Chinese New Year. I think we're. Scratching the bottom of the barrel on. <laughs> but, but, dude, next week, so this Friday we have Optic Contenders. Next week. Yeah, I get, I'm getting a box. Hey, I'm getting a box of that. Nice. Oh, what's up? Next week is not only Bowman, uh-huh. National Treasures football. I'm not getting that. I am getting a, uh, two Bowman boxes. You could buy a case of National Treasures football or a new new car. Literally, it's $20,000. $20,000? 20, 5 k a box. Jeez. Five, nuts, we have five dude. boxes. Yeah, there were, there, were, there were some people talking about how they'll be at a card show, and it's just, like, vendors, and they're like, uh, hey, do you want five cases of National Treasures? It's like, how the hell did you get five cases of National Treasures? You know, there's some shady business going on. Today I had a guy bring in ten more. He's brought me 20 now, ten more prison basketball oh, players. He's, he's getting back to He had the receipt from Target. No, 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 no. How they still got to yeah, ring them up. I know, I know. Right? It's just, so the one I heard was, and maybe you didn't want to tell me that, but the one I heard was, they're just starting the computer, ringing it up right away, giving it to the guy, going out the side door. Yep. You know, I mean, it's not, so it's not a here, here's, mission impossible. So here's the update like, in Bloomington and Burnsville. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. I was talking about that. So we had our customers tell us. So Target has instituted a policy where 8 a.m. on Friday yep. is the, the day quarry is doing that where too. you come and you get a number. Yeah. And they said the moment they opened, there was people waiting. Yeah. And my, my buddy got there, one of our, our regulars, got there. I think they open at 6. I think he got there about 7. Mm-hmm. He was number 24 on the list at 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock. And no, at it's, 8 o'clock, it's, it's I believe. It's a random it's, number or in no, order? No, it's in order. In the order. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then, and then here's the problem. In order, they call you back by text or phone. Okay. Uh, I don't know if they'll – I think – or email. I don't know how they contact you. They contact everybody and say, hey, you're up next. 
They give you a 15-minute window to come back to the store to pick out your box. Now, here's the problem. If everyone takes 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, it's going to take forever. It literally takes. So four hours later, you get a text, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're out anyway. My buddy gets a text. Oh, my God. You're up next. He gets there, and they go, oh, yeah, we're sold out. He goes, why did you text me? They go, oh, we just wanted to let you know that you're. You like, I, no, like, no, no, I don't need to show up here for you to tell me you're already wow, sold out. That's, that's, so, no, that I mean, so why bizarre. don't they just give the number? Why do you get need 15 minutes? You're getting, what the, what the limit, two? Just one, I think. One. You need so, 15 minutes to pick one thing? No, the, it's 15 minutes for them to travel back. No, that's the bullcrap. They just open the door and, th- and do it. Oh. No, but basically people are leaving. They're, so if you show up at 7, you're not going to wait till. 10, 15. Yeah, they will. That's hardcore. On a three hundred dollar prism basketball blaster for twenty bucks. I, I, what are they letting the 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 weakling get away? With? <laughs> get so get away it's, with it. it. They're trying to share the wealth, spread the wealth. Yeah, I guess. But and all they yet, gotta do is just say, "Be in line, come in one at a time, grab your thing, get the hell out of here." I don't know why they're making it so complicated. Well, and if if you're first up, I mean, I I have not seen. Yet in the wild, from a single person, an actual prism basketball blaster. I've yeah. only seen hangers. I've so heard about it. So I don't know if there's just that many less of them or if they're that much. I don't know if megas oh, are I out yet. I, I don't know. Have you uh, seen any of them? I haven't seen any of them. Have you guys had them? Yeah. yeah. You've gotten a couple? No, I haven't gotten you any. You haven't gotten any. Have you gone and got? Have you seen how many they nope. had? I mean, normally no. there'd be about what? Yeah, 10, 10, and then maybe 20 like, in the old days. Maybe 20, ha- uh, 20 bla- uh, hangers blasters or cellos. Or well, no, there'd be 20 blasters in the old days. I mean, that was a pretty normal amount. You know, two two rows, double stack. Which, by the way, I'm excited to sell some of my Prism from last year. I oh, see there you the, go. Bo- the retail it, it, box. The time is now. Eh, the it's time is close. now. It's close. It's warming up. The temperature's <laughs> getting warming there. Up. I don't know if we're ready to take it out of the oven yet, but you know. I mean, well, let me ask you a question. I'm going to give you. We have to check the temp. I'm going to give you a proposition <laughs> about in the store, yeah. and to me, it's the really easy choice. So people yeah. are looking at basketball. I got yeah. two products. I only got one left. No, you got two. But I got hoops, blaster seventy five. Or last year's premium stock for ninety. It's the easiest choice in the world, right? Last year's premium. Last year's premium stock. It's not even close for an extra fifteen bucks. It's a chrome, better class. It's a chrome, chrome better class. It's easy. Higher. I mean, higher end. Yeah. Like people have been asking me. I'm going, dude. Premium stock. Like it's not even. And actually, you know what I've noticed? Premium stock. We we had two hundred blasters. I bet we've sold. 50 of them in the last two weeks, no. partly because there's this well, it's going to start to dry up, yeah. But also, a Prism Hobby Box is $2,000. Well, it's not only that, but... It I mean, we sold them all in the first day somehow. Here's I don't the know thing how. about premium stock. How did we sell 10 boxes at $2,000 in a day? Well, I don't yeah. understand, like... I. Yeah, <laughs> wow. But here's what happened with premium stock. It looked, for a while, it was the only thing getting stock, and yep. it seemed like there was so much of it. Yeah. There really is not, because yeah. what they were doing is there wasn't much hobby. Yeah. So it's all in these little tiny blasters. That's how yep. they distributed the whole product yep. almost, yep. you know. And so what happened was the only at thing is stock. And so team. everybody goes, oh, look at how much there is of this. There isn't very much of it. No. It just it just was the only thing You know, thing it's interesting. Around. I still have two hobby boxes on the shelf. Yeah. And for whatever reason, the hobby has That's going to change. That's going to change. All of a sudden, yeah. it's just going to be like, oh, wait, you can't get it anymore. Boom. Well, here's the deal. Like, You'll sell out. I could like, buy a Donruss box from this year for 1000 or a premium well, stock from last year for 500 That's dude, a no-brainer. Yeah, it's messed That's up. It's not even It's not even question. close. So I, I, I yeah. figured you'd be with me on that and the value well, play. But yeah. I, I'm telling people, like, the fact that I still have blasters from last year, Yeah. I, I'd be just gobbling them up and just even keeping them. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. Them. But, but I'm just talking about the uh, relative value. It's yes, just like relative value is clearly. 75 hoop. And Zion's playing and People are selling those hoops for 90, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, like, and not only that, there's other guys. Now, wait. I noticed somebody, Robert Williams, for the Celtics. Is he a rookie of the year before, or is he 18? He's 18. He's Luka. He's doing really well. Is his prices up? His prices are way I'll up. Go, and I, and up. you know who else? Celtics, is, right? Yep, Celtics. Yeah, yeah. You know who else's prices are way up? But we just pulled some of I think his I have stuff a prism, out. I knew that. Is, um, um, oh, my goodness. My mind just went blank. I yeah, you're know. not uh, very smart. I know. Terrible. <laughs> I'll say this much. Right now, there's two or three other guys in the last – Two years, eighteen and nineteen yeah. prism, that you'd be surprised at some of their prices, and so that's why I hold. No, on I wouldn't all. be. I, like I wouldn't be, yeah. but other people would other be. People here's would the be. thing, yeah. like here's the other thing too, is what people don't understand is when the draft class hits and there's all these nineteen and twenty year olds, and they've been in the league for three years. That means they're yeah. twenty two and twenty three. Yeah, 
And they're like, oh, that's 2016. Yeah, he's 21. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, and the guy in baseball, <laughs> like, a lot of these guys are 28-year-olds. people year olds, aren't used to that in basketball yeah. as much because that's only been a thing for uh, nine years, well, ten it, years. Well, we're in the era now where, where guys are coming out after one year. Well, that's what I'm saying. But, but in baseball, yeah. Ken Griffith Jr. was 19 because you can do that. Yep. Right? In basketball, it was Garnett, and then there was this rush, and then it a lull, and then it's back. Well, yeah, it's been four years, but he's 22. Yeah. He should be a senior in college. Right. And so then you're like, oh, I can't believe he's doing so well. He's such an old prospect. Well, nah, he would just be – we do that in baseball all the time Yep. He, for a guy who is an international signing. Yep. It's like, oh, he's been he's been around for five years. Yeah, he's 21. Like, yeah. I, I don't know to tell you. He got signed when he was 16. Speaking of that, uh, quarterback-wise, yeah. the – who who, did, who just signed uh, – who just got signed by the Panthers? Um, Brady Panthers. Darnold, yeah. thank you. Sam Darnold stuff, and actually, I had set aside some Prism Darnold graded ones. Mm-hmm. Just like I'm not gonna sell them. This no, oh, yeah, it was a and I know. And today's the day. I was like, I think I might go take them out now. I, I'm, by the way, I'm not a believer in Darnold. No, no, I'm no, a hard no. sell on, but I don't sell. have anything. I got hard a sell, you know. Well, well and, and then you had the Dalton move, and then you you've had some. There's some you yeah. know, movement with quarterbacks, but like this is gonna be an it's exciting be a weird year. Hey, we were talking about this. As good as Prism football and last year's football products were. This year's going to be just as good. Oh, There's going to be a potential four or five starting quarterbacks. Well, here, here's some quarterbacks. Here's some Matt you said, don't get that every year. Here's like, Matt you know, said, too. It's he a goes, crazy how year. crazy is Prism football going to be this year with this draft class? And I said, it's not going to make a damn bit of difference with the draft class. Yeah. It's just a little bit. This year's no, basketball, it's it is. No, not. No, you're right. It's not. Let, let, let me say Look this. at this year's hey, basketball. Hey, no, because no, if this year's basketball had Zion in this market, they'd be 35. I don't. I I don't know if that's because, true. Well, I can tell you because last year's hobby are going for now. That. By the way, by the way, I mean that is a true thing. Like in the past, you yep. would look at a rookie crop and yep. start making decisions whether you want to invest in the product. Yep. That is a hundred percent what it was. I don't right. think that's what it is. It will let it me say this: good draft, bad it, it, draft. If who cares? No, if if the NFL had literally no quarterbacks in the first round, I that would be matter. bad. It would be bad. This this year's basketball crop is not great. No. And it's still not good. Anthony Edwards is – Yeah, I mean, but is guys. he taking yeah. the league by storm? No. But but understand, prison – Even LaMelo was Understand why pri- – now, the draft class – a bad draft class doesn't mean prison basketball is going to zero because you have I'm LeBron not zero, James, but I'm Orange saying Prism, it's $75. They're like 900 raw. $75 for hoop blaster. Yeah. $90 for hoop blaster. Yeah. It's not a good class. No, it right, doesn't yeah. matter anymore. Yeah. And so that was my whole argument. I was just like, I don't think it matters. But, but okay, so I'll say – Having a big name, a chase guy, does help. Yeah. Oh, no, but yeah. not having him doesn't By the way, him. I'm going to call that kid Johnny Lawrence for the next 20 years. I always say Johnny Lawrence. God, that's not his name. Trevor. Yeah, I know. I mean, I keep – well, it's, he's the credit kid. No, what's up? John, J- Johnny Football? No, Johnny, Johnny Lawrence is the yeah. blonde-haired kid from But, I mean, are you saying – oh, okay. Oh, so, so I always – I just go, go Johnny Lawrence. I go, that's not his name. What the hell is his first name? <laughs> And then I go, yeah, Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Yeah, so. But now they're saying they, they're really excited about the kid from BYU, uh, Zach. Uh, mm. He's number. They're saying he's going to be number two quarterback oh. pick. Yeah, pick. I just know Fields yeah. and Lawrence. So you got Fields, and, and, you, and you got the guy from North Dakota State. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, you got there's though. five guys that you can tell that I do not follow college. <laughs> not only that, there's a receiver who sat out this year. Yeah. Who's actually going to go ahead of the Alabama kid who won the Heisman? Wow. So there's a receiver. Who basically the, the NFL, NFL, the NFL scouts, says yeah. he's actually better than the guy who won the Heisman Trophy. And you know how few receivers have won Heisman trophies? Right, but huh. here's the thing though, there is a such thing as and I you know, I'm not the what Paul I don't say the college football mind, obviously, because 'cause I'm not <laughs> very good at college in general, but there is a thing of a guy who does really well in college, but he's not made for the pro game. Yep. And and a guy who maybe yeah. Is was a late developing guy who they go. This guy's got exactly what it takes. We right. know that the NFL can. So it might be a situation yeah. where like like yep. this is an NFL football player. The other one like might be, but this oh, one is. But now yeah. speaking of Bowman next week, the big news for Bowman is the Twins have a first round pick. What's his name? Who's going to be a have a Bowman first? Whoever oh, really uh, Sabato. Sabato. Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me about what 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 position? big power hitter first baseman. First baseman. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Big. <laughs> Big fat mm-hmm. fat power header dude. Like he's not fat, no, but like he's a big well, husky he, so kid. He's a college kid. Yeah, he's a college bat. So he might we might see him real fast, like a couple of years. Nice. Like probably not this year, but like a Brian. You know Zimmerman. who? You know who? Uh, who got a? I think his first 
major league hit the other day was Jeffers. Now I know he's a catcher. He's I like Jeffers, yeah, but really yeah, hard sell. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you catch the baseball. Oh, you don't play shortstop or center field. Yeah, John's like hard sell. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah. Oh, 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 you, you don't play center field. Okay, so without explaining it, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It was uh, Kavak, not Kavako. No, he hasn't been called. He hasn't been up. No, up. No. It's uh, he won't be. Um, uh, I'll pull it up. No, that's it right. Was, it was yesterday. Last, but it was no, yesterday. the Twins yeah. might be very good at catcher if uh, Jeffers does well, because then it's like there's no downgrade when um, what's his face has the day off. Um, what's his Garve face? Sauce. Garve Sauce. Garve Thank Sauce. Garve Sauce. Yeah. You. So uh, Garver Jeffers tandem if they're both like real good the thing about baseball like you don't uh, need your catcher Brent to be Rooker all Rooker has been up Rooker is who Rooker got well, yeah but Rooker got called up last did, year did too did he get up last year yeah okay so who had their first hit uh, Garlic he, he's new this is why we we don't let the Cave basketball Simmons guy tie baseball Steve of course I, I can't think of who it was either, are so. you sure <laughs> maybe Jeffers didn't have a hit last no, time he did, did. did he okay. yeah he, he played did, a few did, games did. Uh, did he okay he had some hits but Am I thinking somebody for them? <laughs> yeah. No, this is no. I always talk about this how the fun. podcast is a replacement for a phone call. This is literally how our phone call goes. It's like, hey, what? It, and then there's silence, and we're like, uh, we're just Google, <laughs> trying, to, trying, to, trying to prove each other wrong. Right. Classic. All right. Well, I think we're wrapping up. How deep are we? One twenty. Right what's on. up? What's so up? I went into this podcast and I go, I think it's gonna be uh, as close to a phone call as we are going to get because I showed uh, Evan all the notes that I had and my paper was empty. Uh, uh, did, is, we, did we have any questions? Have you seen any? No, keep, I haven't seen any questions. Keep sending but yeah, send questions. We Subscribe. Love, love, it, it's a good prompt for us because yeah. then we go off on a tangent. Well, and I love things. knowing what is either catching your interest. It might, or right. even make a comment of this topic yeah. cover more. It doesn't have to necessarily be a question. Like, Although I you know, am going to ask you on air, Evan. Live on air. Because we're live. Studio C. And when I do that, can we get that breakdown of topics in the um, description? Like, hey, we talked about this at this minute. Because sometimes I'll be like, oh, yeah, we talked about that. And then I, I don't want to be like, well, listen to an hour and a half podcast. Yeah. Uh, even though you should. I mean, and we, everybody like, should. we like you listening to But it, I'd, yeah. I'd like to be able to go, oh, go to minute 23. And then sure. we talked about that. Even if it's just like five, I love how you know, we're whatever the big ones. On yeah. We're on air, man. People are like, hey, so we we're the, about in, to... the inner workings. You get the background. Evan's Thank you, everybody, for job. listening. We are now signing off, and we'll be off air.